distinguished guests, and more especially the residents of Cosmo City. For the first time, uh, MEC, I realized that the people who lived in Uskotipola are here. And I wondered where they had disappeared to. Zvali Uskotimanje, viva Cosmo City, viva! Thank you. Nothing is more gratifying for all of us here today to see our dreams so wonderfully matured, especially at the time when the clouds of economic gloom hover above our heads with remarkable obstinacy. It is perhaps fitting that we remind ourselves of the many wonderful things taking place in our beautiful country, and this is one such occasion today. Negativity and pessimism have never built anyone, or any country, or any institution, or any company, or any people. We, South Africans, are a resilient people. We strive to keep the flame of our struggle and the hopes of our people under very difficult conditions. We've had very difficult times in our country. We've had difficult times too after our independence, especially in this sector. We'll probably also continue to have some difficulties as we go on. But the sun is beginning to shine, as we can see, it is shining on us today. And the clouds that have covered us by the time we leave this hall will give way to the beauty that we have created here in Cosmo, in Cosmo City. What we have witnessed today is the outcome of a dream we embarked upon many years ago, which we solidified about 10 years ago. A dream to fashion a different future together. A future that will remarkably change the ugly past that separated our people on the basis of class, color, religion, and ethnic background. Today is a fitting celebration of what we have achieved in providing 4.3 million houses and opportunities for people to live in. I need to emphasize at this point that this is the conservative estimate that we have worked on. The other estimates that have been worked on by other institutions like race relations point at six million. I'd like to be able next year to say we have achieved that six million. But what we can vouch for now is we have achieved 4.3 million houses. Now that is a remarkable feat that no other country in the world has ever achieved. It is fitting that we celebrate this on the 60th anniversary of the Freedom Charter that defines the centrality of the human condition. It is also fitting that this year we celebrate the 20th anniversary of our Constitution, through which we embarked on the challenge of having to reverse the effects of colonial apartheid policy interventions, while at the same time prefigure the kind of new society that we strive for, that we saw today. The fact that human dignity, the achievement of equality, and the advancement of human rights and freedoms feature prominently amongst its key founding uh, sections in the Constitution, it's what we live for and what we're here about today. Shelter plays a very critical role in the restoration of human dignity, along with land reform, the constitutional claim proclaims, I'm sorry, access to adequate housing as a human right. It enjoins the state, and I quote, to take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve a progressive realization of this right. What we heard here from Ariachen Mzansi is that while the state has a responsibility to make sure that progressively we provide you with a house and shelter you progressively have a responsibility to look after that asset that we have given you. We've come a very long way 
In keeping true to both the spirit and letter of the Constitution, we went further than simply providing housing units. When we conceptualized the breaking new ground policy in 2004, we moved further by ensuring that we create a livable environment. This required of us to ensure that there is provision of social amenities, such as you can see here in Cosmos City, in addition to the provision of basic services. Today is a celebration of investing in our commitment to think and to construct a different future, to dream of a different future that we have now arrived at. It is also a celebration of the collaborative uh, responsibility between government and the private sector, the banks, and yourselves, the residents of this area. Cosmos City is just one of a range of other initiatives that we've undertaken since 2004. This includes the pilot projects such as N2 Gateway in Cape Town, Brickfields in Johannesburg, Connubia in Durban, and we can go on and on. We will be celebrating these throughout this month, and please stay tuned to the television to see what we have provided for the people of this country. It is perhaps opportune that we also celebrate and highlight the fact that these housing opportunities that we provided are an asset. We have unlocked an asset for you to be able to take your children to school, to be able to build a business around that and any other venture that you might want to hang on to. Please utilize this asset responsibly. The breakdown of the 4.3 million housing opportunities is as follows. We have built 2.8 million fully subsidized houses for our people. We have provided our people with 986,000 service sites where they themselves can build their own houses. We have provided enhanced extended discount benefit schemes to 360,000 people. We have provided hostel accommodation for 68,400 people. We have provided social housing for 121,000 households. We have provided finance linked houses to 6,000 households. Government is estimated to have spent 500 billion for top up structure and bulk services and social and economic amenities to achieve this. It is estimated that over 20 million South Africans stay in subsidized houses. Now, for you to understand what this means, this is the total population of Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, Mozambique, and Swaziland. This is what we have provided our people. And the number grows every day. The overarching message that we, are, we as government would like to give to you is as we celebrate this and what we have given to 40 to 20 million people is achievable in our lifetime. We proved it today. The dream that we had so many years ago has been realized today. Cosmos City is this point, which is why we chose Cosmos City. It is a livable environment, a thriving community with the necessary social amenities and basic services. We have estimated that the number of jobs that have been created out of this endeavor, especially the non-permanent ones, during the actual construction is 4.3 million jobs. If we were to assume that six people are involved in building each house, because you need a bricklayer, you need an electrician, you need an engineer, and you can go on. If six people are needed for each one of these houses, then what we have done is provided 20 million job opportunities for our people. Now, if we are to replicate Cosmos City for each and every province, imagine how many job opportunities we are unleashing. In addition, the economists point to the significant increased demand for household appliances such as furniture and other things. It is estimated for every three rand of one rand invested, oh sorry, 
it is estimated that every one rand out of three rands that you have is invested in the house and the appliances that you have in your house. The manufacturing and retail sectors, therefore, also create a significant number of jobs because of the demand for newly housed household, households. More than delivering houses and work, we are also alleviating poverty. Those of you who have had the benefit of walking around Cosmo City with myself or driving around with the MEC would discover what we have here is a spectacularly beautiful city. The kind of city we had envisaged for our people for the future. A place where there are houses, amenities, where people could live and be comfortable and secure. You will see our dream come true in every place we go to. A dream that our constitution envisaged. It is also a dream come true the 1956 Freedom Charter and the representatives of our people who went to Clip Town, who said and demanded that there shall be houses, security and comfort for all. Here in Cosmo City you find all of that. We've had a briefing with uh, your councillors and representatives here and they told us that we might have provided a dream but we still have an outstanding problem we are experiencing and I thought I should go through that to assure you that we are continuously attending to your problems. We have been informed that there are about 200 houses here that do not have electricity. To those people who have been waiting for the electricity and have been waiting to move into their houses, I can announce today that tomorrow the DG will sign over the necessary money so that the electricity can be As winter approaches, as winter approaches, we would like to make sure that our people are comfortable and secure in their houses. We've also been informed that the facilities that go with a community such as this one, such as sporting facilities, stadium, and all of those things are a necessary part of your lives. We have committed that we will make sure that out of the money that we give to Johannesburg will be ring-fenced money for sporting facilities for First City. Now, as this was being told to me, it is explained that Minister there are so many stadia in Orlando, you know? And they talk about Orlando is Orlando. So if Orlando has stadia, why can't we have stadia? And I had to warn them, but hey, Orlando is a serious matter. <laughs> so when you talk of Orlando, but uh, we are working gradually towards making sure that your level is at the same level as Orlando as well. It has been pointed out to us that there are conservation areas here which have to be preserved in a particular way, but of concern here in these conservation areas are the open dams with the possibility that our children might drown in those open dams. We have committed to the councillor that we will find a way of fencing those dams and making sure that our children are safe. We have also committed to making sure that there are mobile police stations so that any one of you will feel safe 24 hours of the day because you know that driving around you will be a mobile police station. And if there are any sources about, let the message be heard, there will be mobile police stations. We also visited the healthcare center and discovered there that a mother with a young child had been there since 8 o'clock because the queue is so long and the child is not getting better and we decided to commit that we would also provide mobile healthcare facilities to make sure that when your children get ill you have a mobile station nearby where you can go to. This will give to you 
because this is our pilot project for the next 10 years. We would like every mega project to resemble Cosmos City to the extent that it is possible for us to do so. So as you live in your house, please understand that you are an example of what we would like everybody else to do. As Arahang Mzansi has indicated, we want you to look after your environment because we want to provide a beautiful city that is a representative of what we are. We also understood that you would like some transport here and that you would like the BRT route to be extended to this place. Fortunately for us, we have the MEC here. He's a very powerful man in this province and he will carry the message so that we can bring the BRT here. We did mention that perhaps we might ask him to uh, bring the how train here. He said, Minister, don't dream too much. He said, just curtail your dreams a bit. So uh, we'll stop there and make sure that the BRT system does find its way to Cosmos City. It also been requested to look into complexes where SMMEs can, can operate from and we will get in touch with the Minister for these amenities to make sure that this is done in the nearest possible time. We will be back here in March when we are opening the fire, the fire center, fire and safety center, which has just been built in Cosmo City to ensure that we are all able to look after our, our assets and our homes and ourselves in the face of any problem that we encounter. When we do that, hold us accountable for all of these things that we have promised. What we have here has been a very good collaboration and a very good example of what collaboration can produce. We know the difficulties and challenges of this environment, but this is a shining example of what is possible when we put our minds to it together. In this regard, therefore, I'd like to thank all of those who took the time, believed in us, believed in our dreams, and joined hands with us. This would be the banks, believe it or not. The banks were extremely exuberant and very giving in making sure that it is possible for us to be where we are right now. We asked 702, I'm told that they are AWOL today, we asked 702 to come and join us in making sure that we can realize the dream of 702 houses. I don't know if they've done that, we will find out if they have. But while I am still here on the podium, and if there's anybody out there, especially the media, I'd like to challenge you to come and join us and make sure that the people who work in your environment are provided with a house. It is your responsibility. It is part of your responsibility to ensure that the people who are employed by you have decent accommodation. So, SABC2, SABC3, 404, whatever channel it is, and anybody else out there, please come and join hands with us so that we can provide houses for everybody who's employed in that space. The successful completion of the city gives us as South Africans an upper hand in what we have driven and gives us the edge that the world has congratulated us on. We owe it to you and we thank, that. We thank you for that. Our presence here today symbolizes our dreams come true, to cement our relationship with our partners and to venture to transform our country for the betterment of the lives of all our people. And to the people of Cosmos City, I leave with you my dream, my hopes and everything I have strived to provide. Please look after those assets because they mean so much to me. I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh...